Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Chemin student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the differential distillation mass balance method. So essentially what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at the mass balance over a binary mixture system whereby we're going to apply a special equation and we'll use a graphical means in order to solve uh, for the outlet conditions. So this is slightly different in terms of the standard mass balance because here we're, we're referring to this as a differential mass balance. But if we take a, a binary mixture of A plus B for separation. Now what we'll do is we'll say that within the vessel then what we have is a total moles is denoted by capital W. Now when we talk about distillation and we talk about mass balances in distillation we always refer to what's known as the more volatile component because the more volatile component is the thing that is going to change its uh, state first. So therefore we can manipulate the operating conditions in order to only remove, say, the more volatile component at the top of the column and leave the less volatile component in the liquid state in the bottom. Now what we'll say here is that the more volatile component composition is denoted by small x. So therefore the more volatile component moles is going to be the total multiplied by the composition of the MVC. So that's where we get our Wx. Now in the top product, what we would know is that the total number of moles is, in this case, denoted by D. We have the more volatile component composition is now going to be given by Y. And then the more volatile component moles is going to be D multiplied by Y. Now sometimes what we can also put here is average. We can put Y average because this is a a rough estimation of the composition of Y, or sorry, the, the composition of the more volatile component in the vapour phase. Now what we can then say here is that the operating time is denoted by T. So what we can then say here is that D, so that's the total moles of the top product, is equal to the total moles at the initial time minus the total moles and the final time. So this is the, the initial time and this is the final time. Now when we add in our compositions of the MVC, what we will see here is that we have D multiplied by Y average, that's this part here, is equal to the initial number of um, moles, or sorry, the, the composition in the initial stream, multiplied by W0, minus the final, which is the XT. So that's the final uh, composition after a given operating time. Now, if we rearrange this, we can get the equation for the Y average. So that would give us the average uh, composition of the MVC in the vapor phase, which is a very, very important parameter to know when we're modeling our systems because what we can then do is start to adjust a reflux ratio in order to get a specified value. Now to vaporize a small amount of liquid i.e. the more volatile component so we'll, here we'll call that component A then what we have to do is we take the generalized balance and we say that the amount of liquid A before the system must equal the present amount of the liquid A within the system plus the amount of A that is vaporized. So that makes sense. So this is what comes in must be equal to the amount in the vapor phase and the amount in the liquid phase. So it would be an even distribution, not an even, even distribution, but you would get a, a, essentially these values would have to add up to one. So what we can then do here is we can substitute in some nomenclature instead of um, just text. So we know that the amount of liquid A beforehand is going to be Wx. And that's going to be equal to the present amount of liquid A. So that's going to be x minus a proportion. So we're doing a differential balance here. So this is similar to what we would do in a plug flow reactor um, proof balance. So again, what I'll do is if this is 
a little bit unfamiliar, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description to our Mass and Energy Balance uh, course whereby you can see the full derivation for our plug flow reactors using this uh, nomenclature. But here essentially what we're saying is we're taking a chunk of our system, so this here, and this would be our DX and uh, DW. Essentially, in a nutshell, that, that's what this is. So what we're saying is that as time passes through the system, we have x minus dx multiplied by w minus dw. So that's the change in the total moles compared to the initial moles. And then we have y dw. So that is the composition of the MVC in the vapor phase multiplied by the change in the overall moles. Now, if we multiply all this out, let's see what happens. So we get Wx or Xw is exactly the same, just round the other way. So when we multiply all of this out, we can use the standard mathematics of FOIL or just simply multiply out the brackets as you normally would. And then we'll end up with this equation here. Now, thankfully, some of these terms are going to cancel each other out. So we can get rid of the Xw or Wx because these are exactly the same. And then we're left with this arrangement here. Now, when we model such a system, when we get this arrangement where we have dx dw, so these are the small, small changes within our model, what we can do is we can neglect this term because it is very, very small compared to the other terms. So then what we can do is start to rearrange this because what we see here is that we can have a differential equation. So if we get the dw's and the w across to that side, and then we can get the dxa in over ya minus xa. Now this is a very special equation. And when we integrate with the given limits of the initial number of moles, that's w0, the amount of moles remaining after a certain amount of time t with the corresponding compositions of A being X0 and XT respectively, and that is in the liquid phase. So X0 is the initial uh, composition, XT is the composition after a given point in time. So when you substitute in the limits, we can obviously, we can simplify this nice and straightforward, because this would just be 1 over W DW with the limits of W0 over WT. So that would give you log of W0 over WT. Now this, as I said before, this is an important equation because this is known as the Rayleigh equation or Rayleigh equation, however you want to pronounce it. Now this can be solved graphically or it can be solved numerically. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the graphical means of solving the Rayleigh equation. So let's take a look at a exercise. So what we have here is a mixture that contains 50 moles of benzene and 50 moles of toluene. So we have a 50-50 uh, mixture. And it's separated by a differential distillation at one atmosphere. Now we know the remaining liquid is 35 moles. And the relative volatility between benzene and toluene is 2.2. And we need to calculate the concentration of benzene in the remaining liquid and the top product. So the question here lies, where do we start? So the first thing that I would do is write down all the information, summarize the information that we've got, and then let's work out what our initial number of moles is. So that's, of course, going to be 50 from the benzene and 50 from the toluene. So we know that we have 100 moles coming into the system, with liquid moles at Wt, so at that, a given point in time, we have 35 moles left. So we now know our relative volatility, our initial amount of moles, and our final amount of moles for this given period of time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this graphically. And the first thing we have to do is obtain the equilibrium data for a benzene and toluene system. So that is our XA and YA data. Now what we'll have to do is we specify values of XA and then we pop them into this expression in order to find the corresponding value of YA. 
So this is the compositions of A in the liquid and the vapour phase simultaneously within the system. Now the reason we have to use this equation is because we have been given the relative volatility of 2.2. So that is, of course, going to give us the affinity on how easily this system is going to evaporate. So what we'll do is we'll take a full range, so from 0 to 1, being from a concentration of 0 to a concentration of 1, we will substitute in different values of xA from 0 to 1 in equal increments to get the corresponding values of yA. And when we do that, we get this table here. So you can see that we have 0 0.1. When we substitute 0 0.1 into here and solve, we would get 0 0.196 for the corresponding Y value for benzene. And that would be your liquid benzene concentration. And then you would just do exactly the same thing. It's important here for the graphical method to keep these in equal increments. So that's one thing just to remember, is try and keep these in equal increments all the way from 0 to 1. Now that we have this, we can now go on to the next stage, and we apply this to the Rayleigh equation. Because what we can see here is, it's easily enough, we're going to be able to find what ln of W0 over Wt is, because we have found out that that's 100 and that's 35. So this value, we can know definitively what it is. However, here is where it causes some problems, because we don't actually know the time. So what we have to do here is, we take a look and we rearrange this, so we take the dxa across just to the side here, so this is essentially 1 over y minus x. So what we can then do is construct a table like this, because we know what the corresponding values of x and y are at simultaneously, so what we can do is do the denominator of this fraction first, so we can do y minus x, so that would be this value minus that value, we give you this value. Then what we do is we do 1 over that, and that will give us our 10.37, 6.46, etc. Now what we're then going to do is from this, we are going to plot this against this. And you'll see why we'll do that in just a second. Because what we are essentially doing here is we want to map out this change, so the inverse of the change of y minus x against the concentration of benzene in the liquid because we were given information about it in the liquid for Wt. So what this would look like being plotted is something like this. So we have our 1 over y at minus x and this is our x benzene um, in the liquid phase. So again from 0 to 1 uh, in equal increments. Now the red line is what we said earlier, is this against this. So these coordinates form this red line here. Now the summary information that we know was that W0 was 100, WT was 35 and X0 was 0 0.5. So that is the initial uh, composition in the feed because we know it's 50-50. So X0 for um, benzene will be 0 0.5. Now what we can then do here is substitute in our values of W0 and Wt. So we get 100 over 35, which means that this value is 1.0498. Now what this is, this is a trial and error process. So we need to assume different values of Xt in order to reach this target value. So again, we'll plot our, this is our initial x naught value, so we, we touch it at the line. And then what we can do here is we assume a value. So here we would do xt, we say is 0 0.25. So what we would then do is we would plot, sorry, substitute in our values in here, and we can work out the area of this rectangle. Now the area of the rectangle is our target value. So that when we work out this area, it, we need to try and get 1.0498. And that way we know we have the correct uh, composition of benzene at our final time. So here we can see that it's not quite right. We've got 1.0748. So that means we have to try another iteration in order to see if we can hit our target value. So this time what we'll do is we will shorten the value, so we'll then 
instead of 0 0.25, we'll then go for 0 0.3. That makes the our size a little smaller because our value is slightly bigger than what our target value was. So that's why we come in a bit, i.e. we increase the value of xt. So again, same thing as before. Now, thankfully this time, with a xt value of 0 0.3, that gives us the target value that we need. So we know that the composition of benzene at the final time of T is 0 0.3. So therefore, what we can then do is summarize um, our system. So we know that the remaining liquid is 35 moles. Of that, 30% of it is benzene. So we just worked that out. So we do 0 0.3 multiplied by 35, we give us 10.5 moles. So we know that in the liquid phase, we have 10.5 moles of benzene. And then we take that from that and that will give us 24.5 moles of toluene so that's for the top uh, sort of the liquid then if we look at the distillate we know that dt so the distillate product is going to be what comes into the system that's our 100 minus 35 from the top because again if we have our system coming in like so this is our distillate here so this is our feed this is d and this is the bottom we know 100 comes in here we know that 35 comes in here, so this must be 65 up here. So that's how we get the 65, just in case uh, you weren't 100% sure. Now we know that what comes in must come out. So we know that 50 moles of benzene came into the system. And from this part, we know that 10.5 remains in the liquid phase. So therefore, all we have to do is take these values away from each other, and that'll tell us that the amount of benzene in the top product, or the distillate, is 39.5. Therefore, what we can then do is say that the concentration of benzene in the distillate is going to be 39.5, so the amount of moles of benzene divided by the total amount of moles in the distillate, which is 65. So that'll tell us that this stream, the distillate stream, comprises of 60.8% benzene. The other percent, up to 100, would of course be the toluene. And that is exactly how you would go about solving the differential method for distillation applying a graphical Riley equation. So once you break it down like that, it is very straightforward, so long as you remember your trial and error process and your target values. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the Riley equation and differential uh, mass balances for distillation columns. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time, and we hope to see you in another video. Oh,